want when you're shooting a picture is, well, number one, the location should represent uh, what you're writing in the screenplay. And this has a great variety of texture and landscapes and things that I'm looking for. But the other thing is accessibility. This park has a road. We can wheel things in, equipment, bring people in easily. We don't have to trek five miles into the wilderness to access the places we need. And um, if we're shooting in a particular direction, like I'm about to show you, you can't really estimate where it is. So if we shoot our establishing shots, let's say further in the mountains in Oregon or wherever, um, these are great textured, you know, a variety of different things going on in these forest shots. And you'll see as we go up, it changes. Uh, and so that's all you really need because you're creating an illusion that you're deep in the forest. And that's what we do. That's what a film is. It's an illusion. And um, it's not reality. Okay, so this is just one possibility for the uh, Valman campfire scene. Uh, and we need two different campfire locations. One where Bauman, the older Bauman, is telling Roosevelt the story, and the other where the younger Bauman and his buddy, they're out trapping, uh, where their camp is set up. This could be one of those two locations, easy. It's accessible by the road, and um, you know we could bring a few rakes in here and clear it out. And shooting in this direction, it looks like deep wilderness. At night, if we shoot in this direction, we're not going to pick up any lights from anything in the background. You won't see any ha lights from houses or anything like that. So it's, it's really perfect. It's right off the path. It's not far from the entrance. And uh, we could bring gear over here and everything that we need set up this way. And all can be accomplished in here. So it's kind of, this is the way you have to think when scouting a location. I can see with my eye that this would be perfect, especially at night, because really what you're seeing is the illumination from the campfire on our subjects. Uh, we have some good trees and logs around, and that's really what I wanted because I wanted the campfire to accentuate that, that kind of thing, and we don't have to bring too much of that in. So this is a really good spot. So once again, this area here has a lot of uh, characters deep in the woods and I found locations like this. We're not deep in the woods right now, but this could be this could be deep in the woods. So when Bauman is clearing out his traps by himself, it's late in the afternoon, sun's going down. This area is fantastic, you know. I mean even the texture of the ground, even the mud, everything we'll use to our advantage. Uh, this little swamp area over here. You know, I like getting a lot of coverage. See that stump coming out of this little swamp back there? There's a lot of great distance over here. And so, I mean, that's what I want to see. But when we're getting our coverage, we want to think about how do we establish the forest and all of its incredible textures and atmosphere for the audience. I'm seeing birds flying past trees back there. See those birds back there? When I'm shooting, I'm going to, get, I'm going to come out here just for coverage of that kind of thing around the same time that we plan to shoot the Bauman scenes, uh, you know, different stages of them, I'll get all that stuff because we're gonna see that stuff in the background. And I wanna get close-ups of that. I wanna shoot with long lenses. I wanna get all that kind of thing. And it, it just creates a better picture. It makes for better cinema. In the Bauman story, there's something watching them, you know, while they're clearing the traps, or at least I want to feel like something seeing them from a distance. So I would pull way back with the camera, shoot with a long lens, perhaps even 300 millimeter. I think a lot of these scenes, especially when they're out there, just kind of feeling vulnerable, would be shot with a longer lens. I would shoot with this lens, and we're at 300 millimeters right now, the long lens. Let's say Bauman and his buddy were in the distance. I'd shoot them from here because, again, it establishes that the forest has eyes, that they're kind of being seen from a distance. If you want to create a feeling or a mood with each shot, there should be a reason for the placement and the angle, and it shouldn't be so blatant all the time. It should uh, kind of subtly suggest something to the audience. 
maybe even in their subconscious to help accentuate what's going on in the movie. The things I'm paying attention to are very important. I'm looking for wires, right? Because we're supposed to be deep in the wilderness, so you don't, you don't, you don't want to see any power lines. I don't want to... It's quiet. I'm listening, too, because we're going to be recording dialogue. Really what I hear mainly are the sounds of the forest. If we have people mic'd correctly and a good sound mixer on set, shouldn't really... I mean, I haven't heard too many planes fly over. I haven't... You know, there's traffic in the distance, but if we mic people with lavaliers and, you know, we'll, we'll get good sound. I estimated that... Um this left such an impression on Roosevelt, you know, enough to write the story, uh, and it really affected me while I was reading it, and I just think the idea of two men who have been hunting and trapping their whole lives, who aren't really afraid of anything, uh, were confronted by this creature that night, and one of them was killed uh, two days later, and I just think, um, you know, the fact that it left such an impression on Roosevelt uh, is important because obviously he took Bauman seriously and um, this leads me to believe that this was a true story. Roosevelt believed it was true and um, I just feel like it was brief you know the way Roosevelt wrote it but it was so effective and so atmospheric that it, it translated into my mind very vividly and now I want to make that into a movie, and that's what we're doing here. We're scouting the location, and um, this location is perfect. It's just perfect. Uh, and I know exactly how I want to make it, and I want to make it exactly how um, Roosevelt's story affected me. It translated into images and sound in my mind, and now I'm going to put that out on the screen and really make something uh, powerful, emotional, very scary because that's what the story is. It's a terrifying story. Um, imagine you know you're out on a hunting trip or a camping trip with your friend and for three days something has been following you and stalking your camp. You split up at the end of the last three days to go and collect your traps and you come back and your friend is dead. Um, I personally had an experience not in the woods but finding somebody uh, who passed away, a friend, and an untimely death. And so I know how to translate that to the screen, at least that emotion. And so that came across extremely terrifying for me because it brought up ideas of things that I've experienced. And I think that's the most important thing when you're making a movie is that you, you know, even though you may not have experienced the exact same thing, if there's a parallel experience in your life that you can draw from for the emotion as you're directing or as you're crafting the picture, uh, use it and that's what I'm doing I'm gonna use that uh, painful and tragic experience in my own life uh, for this story because I take it seriously kind of creepy that was making all this noise like trying to intimidate us and then we go up to look for it and it goes and hides so once the sun went down it seemed like the best thing to do was to leave who knows what type of impact it would have on the species to to kill one it would take me not having a choice if this thing was coming after me i'm going to put a bullet in it They've been around a long time. I mean, the Indians talk about them hundreds of years ago. Yeah. They've been here a long time. It'll be like on a, on a deer trail, a well traveled deer trail, and another one will be further up and the flush of deer and the deer will panic and run down the trail and then we'll, we'll, we'll ambush it as it comes through. We'll break the neck. We actually 
eyes, you saw the shadow of one, and then he stood up, and the fire reflected in his eyes, and as he stood, he must have been eight, nine feet tall. Hair coming down the sides of it, down the arms of it, and it was just a, just a massive animal. I would like to prove it in a non-lethal way. Hopefully uh, with enough uh, hair samples, maybe uh, get lucky and get a tissue sample. We're in their territory and they were trying to scare us out and we refused to go. We just didn't know how much we could push it. We had no idea what the boundaries were. Two nights there, we, we didn't think we'd make it to see the, see the dawn.